this is uh, our Chinese New Year season. And of course, uh, this will bring back ma uh, many memories for those of you who have many Chinese New Years. And then uh, for those of you who are not Chinese, but you also celebrate Chinese New Year, praise be to God. Now, uh, this morning we want to look at how uh, we Christians should respond to Chinese New Year. Now, back in 1974, when I got saved, uh, we were told not to celebrate Chinese New Year <laughs> and because uh, someone told us that it was like a pagan uh, New Year. But later on, another pastor told us that it's all right. And so thank God uh, we uh, were able to, to celebrate Chinese New Year. And today, I want you to celebrate Chinese New Year with all your hearts, okay? And not to worry. So I'm going to... Uh, look at some truth here. Let me share screen with you. Seeking your blessed visang. <laughs> uh, praise be to God. Now, some of you might be wondering what kind of sermon this is here. Yeah? But let's see. Okay. So, let me begin by wishing you a very blessed and happy Lunar New Year. So, it's not just Chinese New Year, but I also learned that uh, the Vietnamese and the Japanese, I think they also have this Lunar New Year. All right, let's uh, go back into the tradition and see what we can learn about Chinese New Year. And uh, many of you know the story of this Nian So. Huh? Nian So is in the Chinese folklore that somehow on New Year's Eve, Nian So, the monster will come out from the sea and will devour children and livestock. And apparently this Nian So was afraid of two things, uh, the color red and loud noise. And so what happened was that the Chinese began to have this tradition of having firecrackers during the Chinese New Year they will make a lot of noise, drums, and then they have red lanterns, red cloth, and door signs. And all these are meant to frighten away the monster so that everybody can guo nian, all right? Means pass over the nian so pass over. Remember this term, pass over, so much like our Christian understanding of the book of Exodus, whereby Moses led the people through the Passover meal. And then the death angel passed over Goshen, where the children of Israel were, but attacked uh, the Egyptian and all their firstborn from human beings to the cattle and to all the animals, all the firstborn, they died. Okay? So that passed over. Now, why... Why do you think the Chinese talk about, you know, that this Nian So is afraid of red? I believe that because of the tradition that they also have from Adam, all right? And so red is the blood of the lamb. And you find that in antiquity, already the Lord put across that an animal needed to be sacrificed. And that's why you find Cain and Abel, uh, that Abel sacrificed a lamb and it was accepted by God, whereas Cain sacrificed the produce of his land. He was a farmer, but yet, you see, he was not accepted. Because why? Because he didn't understand the meaning of symbols. And so the Bible says, and they overcame him, they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their life to the death. And let's talk about the martyr uh, during the end time. You know, they overcame by the blood of the lamb, which means that the blood of the lamb would give them salvation. Okay. Then the loud noise. And I like to uh, look at Psalm 8 and verse 2 says, you know, um, through the praise of children and infants, you have, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. So praise 
if you praise God as loud as you can, and one thing that the devil really hates will be you praising God. You know why? Because you see, he was the ex-worship leader in heaven. He was the one who led all the angels to praise God. He was the one who sang the loudest. But later on, because of pride, then what happened was that he tried to surpass God and try to be higher than God. But no creature can be higher than the creator. So he wasn't that smart. Though he knew how to praise God, he wasn't that smart. And so he was being cast down. And so now, when anybody started to worship God, you know, this guy will be very upset because it would bring the memory of the past that he was a worship leader in heaven. And then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the side and the tops of the door frame of the house where they eat the lamb. So I carry you back to Exodus 12, where the Passover, you find that red color, all right? And then this red color is the, the color of the blood, but the blood got to be smeared on the top post and the two lintel. So, so what happened is that over the door frame, but not over the threshold. So it formed like an arch, but it is not put on the floor because the blood of Jesus cannot be trampled upon. The blood of the lamb cannot be trampled upon. The blood of the lamb can only cover you. Okay. So then once you put that blood on the outside, then you enter into the house. That house is protected. So that's the idea that the Lord gave to Moses and Moses shared with his people. Now, when we look at um, nowadays, you find that some of the old, uh, the, 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 the churches, huh? they, they have doors painted red to represent the blood of Jesus. But I'm more interested in the Chinese called Gua Hong. Gua Hong means hang red, huh? hanging something red. So to the Chinese is that they put this red cloth over the door. So protection. And since the beast is afraid of red, the red cloth will protect the inhabitants from the attack of the monster. So exactly like what happened in Exodus. Now, Chinese also put red cloth during weddings, right? And also when they open a new business at the front door, you know, they put the red cloth. And so all talking about protection, all talking about blessing. So where did they get all this idea from, huh? So you find that the Chinese has this word called yi, which means righteousness. And so you see a mix of lamb or the sheep, the sheep and me. So the sheep over me, all right, sheep over me. So the sacrifice, so behold the lamb of God. Now we're going to look at the word blessing. Chinese word blessing is very interesting. It's the word fu. Fu. Sometimes we can say that when a person has grown fat, we say fa fu. <laughs> that person has a lot of blessing. A blessing has exploded in him. <laughs> yeah. So let's look at the word blessing. It starts with the word God. So this is the site where Sun is God. Yeah. And then it has a one stroke means one. And you talk about mouth, all right? One mouth, I mean one, uh, one entrance, all right? So one entrance into the Garden of Eden, all right? So if you can enter into, there's only one entrance in the Garden of Eden, and that when you are in the Garden of Eden, you enter into it, and then you would be blessed. And also eco can also means one person or an individual enter into the Garden of Eden and you'll be blessed. So this is the word fu. And so the zone of blessings has always been in the mind or in the shadow of the history of the Chinese would be that 
glorious garden of Eden. So when you remain in God's garden, you are blessed. So there's the word full. You know why? It's because the imprint of Eden has always been in the memories of all the people in the world, all the culture in the world. So in every culture, there is a desire for perfect health, perfect wealth, perfect environment, and perfect relationship. How come they have this kind of idea when they can see that everything around them is not that right, but yet the imprint of the perfect Eden is imprinted into our DNA. And therefore, we always talk about perfection. We always talk about our fullness, wholeness, and blessing. Yeah. Now, let's look at the impact of the fall, the reality out there. And uh, here, you know, a young Indian prince, Sihata, was affected by foresight. Uh, what did he see? He saw an old man. Then he suddenly realized that people will become old. And then he saw a sick man. He saw a dead man. And he saw an ascetic, which means like a guru, like a swami. right? And of course, this Indian prince came from Hindu background. And so they believe in reincarnation. So in his mind, he was thinking that to be reincarnated would be really, really bad because then you'll go through uh, lao bing si, you know, means that you will go through being, being born and then you grow old and then you become sick and then you die. And so that endless cycle of reincarnation. But for us Christians, we don't have that idea of reincarnation. We only have, ours is linear, which means that the day that you are born and then the day that you die after that is either you go to be with God or you do not go to be with God and you go to be with Satan. So that is our idea. But what I'm talking about, this impact of the fall would cause people to think. And so this young prince later on became Gautama Buddha. All right, you might, those of you from uh, this religion, uh, your ex-religion, you might know a lot about him. Now, so what happened to the Chinese people? Of course, they uh, became uh, a polytheist, which means that they worship many gods. And so from divine, means the divine experience, they turn to divination. So the Chinese culture moved from obedient of the one true God to the manipulation of gods, which means that they want the God to do something for themselves here on, on earth. Now, for us is that when we pray, it is not manipulation because we say, according to your will. But you find that over here, uh, there will be many rituals that will bribe the God. Like you must have heard about the kitchen God, isn't it? That you put a lot of sweet candies uh, onto his altar there, right? So that every year, the kitchen God apparently got to go to heaven, uh, to the Chinese heaven, and report to the king of heaven or emperor of heaven what you have done. Because the kitchen God will have seen everything in your house. So, but then because you put a lot of sticky candy, so he had, he had been eating those sticky candy, and so he uh, cannot speak. He cannot say bad things about your family. Can you see that? So that is like manipulating the gods, yeah? And so from being guided by God to guiding the gods to give them what they want. From recognizing eternity as their portion to adopting the temporal to be their top priority. So now you find that the Chinese spend a lot of time building up wealth and uh, being very affluent and uh, you know, putting a lot of emphasis upon this short life that they have. Then from finding the way back to Eden, that is finding the spiritual truth, the way, the truth, and the life, which is Christ, they do creating symbols. So that's why Chinese New Year, you see a lot of symbols. Behind me, you see the red lanterns. And all these are symbols and representation 
actually of Eden, which means to say that perfection, all right, that place harmony, beautiful, peaceful, all these they were longing for, but they do not actually seek the giver of Eden, who is God and who is Jesus Christ. They began to seek after just symbols, the representation. So Christian, how do we respond to Chinese New Year? Like I said earlier, some of us can respond in the extreme and we avoid Chinese New Year. And some, you find, get very involved in everything in the Chinese New Year. Now, first and foremost is that we understand that we are being blessed and that we are not seeking after luck. So when you say, huada, huada, you know, that is seeking after luck, yeah? But we can also say what, but we can say what in that we were being blessed by God so that we become prosperous. And then so ours is prayer versus magic rituals. So when a ritual is grounded in, not grounded in the true God, but grounded in a culture or grounded in certain belief, you find that it becomes a magical ritual. Magic was, means that you actually control the situation by manipulating the supernatural. Okay, So they are hoping that by, by saying certain words and all that, they, they bring good luck and bring blessing to their families. Now, we have to be clear. Ours is always about the promise of God and not the cultural expectation. A lot of time you find that in Chinese New Year, there'll be a lot of expectation and always related to ancestral worship. And so we do not participate in that. We can participate in all the other things except in the worship. And then during Chinese New Year, what we can do is that we recognize that deep in our heart, we are to be witnesses for Christ. Okay? and that we will take this opportunity to share Christ with everybody we meet. And our purpose is not to challenge. Our purpose is to love, understanding that in spite of the fact that they will come, all the relatives will come, and some of them like to show off or tell tall stories about their success, but inside many of them, they are broken people. They are suffering. And if they know that you really care and they are able to, to respond to you and, and ask you for prayer. All right, we are going to talk about this we sang, right? And we saying that you are going to seek your blessed we sang. But before we talk about this to some of our Western friends who might be watching this video, you may not understand what is the meaning of we sang, whether, whereby many of us in Singapore and Malaysia, we understand this very well. It got to be part of the celebration that we have um, during the Chinese New Year. So we sang is actually the word yu sheng. Uh, actually, sheng yu means raw fish, raw fish, sheng yu. Yeah? So as you can see in the picture, it's a large salad dish with thin slices of raw fish, okay? And different vegetable and then various seasoning. And then the diners will mix the ingredients by tossing them up as high as possible. So we want to go into deeper understanding of what this we sang, whether we Christian can participate or not. Now, we sang also play with the homophones using yu, which is another Chinese word called abundance, yu, yu, right? as well as sun. So, so raw is sun, but life also is sun. So it's abundant life, abundant life. So you find that, so we, we sang actually take on another meaning, means having an abundance of wealth and longevity of life. You find that the fish that they use uh, most probably is the ikan parang, okay? But nowadays, the modern restaurant, they use salmon. Right, and you can see the sifu up there, the chef up there, because the slice, the risang in a very, very 
thin slice, yeah, it's a very thin slice. Now let's talk about the history here. Uh, I went and I have done some research and realized that we sung actually, or we sung, uh, we sung actually was invented in China. And uh, let's talk about the alternative name. So we sung, low sung, then the Cantonese name, uh, we sung is a, so the fourth sound and the first sound, all right? And then low sang, low hay, or in English we call prosperity toss. So the original version was as old as 2000 years ago. And that's a time of Christ, yeah? 2000 years ago. Because why? Because uh, there were records and there were writings about this raw fish dish eating with a lot of vegetable, okay? But not as much as what we have now, but the tradition was really way back 2000 years ago. And it's from Guangzhou, where two races seems to be uh, very, uh, uh, you know, active in having this kind of a result in their, in their Chinese New Year. And uh, that will be the Cantonese and the Chiu Zhao, the Teochew, yeah, Teochew. And so they brought it to Malaya in 1800s, in the 1800s. The idea, okay, you can see they came in junk, yeah, in, the, in this kind of a Chinese boat. So the original Chinese we sung, actually they use raw common cup. You can see that the cup up there is being cut, all right, and just mixed with soy sauce, vinegar, peanut oil, uh, pickled shallot, and shredded vegetables. So that's the original. But later on, you know, because uh, uh, they were not able to keep the fish fresh. Uh, so due to hygiene issue, this tradition actually dies out. In many, many of the Southern Chinese uh, places, you don't find that nowadays, okay? And then, but still there were pockets of people uh, who still treasure this kind of a food. And then they also believe that on the seventh day of the Chinese New Year, right? So the, the seventh day when the Lord rested after the creation. Yeah? So the seventh day of the Chinese New Year is called Ren Ri. Ren Ri means every man's birthday. Yan Yat. Yan Yat. So that on the seventh day after the Chinese New Year, uh, the Cantonese and the Teochew will celebrate with Risang. And so you find that restaurants and, uh, you know, uh, eateries are offering this kind of uh, low hay on this special day. Now, the story goes that in Malaysia, of course, it came in the 1920, uh, the 1800s, and in 1920s, there were writings about it and people were talking about it. Uh, there were some newspaper reports about it in 1930s. And then in 1940s, uh, especially they say in this uh, restaurant called Lu, Lu Chen Chi, all right? It's a Chinese restaurant in Saramban. And so they offer this dish. But uh, some reporter claimed that they were the one who invented the Yisang. But the truth of the matter is not. The Yisang was invented in China, yeah? That these people are not. And then in 1964 in Singapore, right, four chefs from the Laiwa restaurant reinvented the Yisang. When we say reinvented was why? Because they introduced uh, more flavor into it. And then in the 1970s, they came up with the Chi Chai Mi, reason, means the, the seven colors, that, which is now a very common, uh, a popular version. You see the seven colors. And so these four chefs, they were the ones who created uh, or reinvented the Yu Sang. So the modern Yu Sang will be the Chi Chai Yu Sang, the seven colored raw fish salad or the fa chai reason, which means the prosperity raw fish salad, or the sing nian reason, new year raw fish salad. I'm like, as though 
I'm promoting Lisang. I don't own a restaurant, so not to worry. But I want to bring this into some spiritual truth here. Yeah. So this would be the modern Lisang uh, that we have here. All right. Let's look at the uh, meaning here, right? Because Chinese always have a lot of meaning. And like I say, is that the, the, the image of uh, Eden, okay, the imprint of Eden is in our DNA. And therefore, whatever that we do, we tend to point back to, to Eden and say, oh, over there, we got more than enough. Over there, you know, we are perfect. Over there, you know, we are healthy. Over there, you know, we are strong and all that. So it's like going back to Eden. But for us Christians, is that we don't go back to Eden, but we go forward to the coming of the Lord. So when the Lord Jesus come back, he will bring perfection upon this earth, and this will be new earth, and then there will be new heaven. All right, let's see the meaning of this fish here. Nian Nian Yu Yi. So again, like I said, means that always have more than enough, means that every year you have abundance. All right, Yu Yi means abundance. So let's look at this way. Second Corinthians verse 9 and 8 says, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Isn't that great to be a Christian? That we know the Creator God, the Creator God who created Eden, the Creator God who created people, and then especially the Chinese people. Uh, you know, the Chinese people are the most uh, uh, number of people on earth, you know. We, 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 we populate uh, the earth. And, and so God wants to bless us. I went to China and I saw how the Chinese churches, they operate and amazing, you know, uh, that they were so much in love with Jesus Christ. Then you have the next item is the carrot, you know, the carrots have been sliced very thin. And so, Hong Yun Tang Tou. Hong Yun Tang Tou means when you, may good fortune be upon you. Hong Wan, Hong Wan. You know, so this is very, very auspicious greeting. But I want you to know one thing is that uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, uh, the Lord wants them to know, he said, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth. So for us Christian is that we are not hoping against hope or we are just declaring something or decreeing something, but that we have the Holy Spirit and he reminds us that God is the provider and God is the one who helps us to create wealth. Therefore, all the Christian, when you are wealthy, you know you're created wealthy so that you can do the work of the kingdom. And that this Hong Yun Tang Tou is part of your portion. Then we have the green radish. Yeah? So, Ching Chun Chang Chu. And that means that may you be youthful and vital always because it's green radish. Now, let's look at Isaiah 40 31. I like this. It says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, you want to be young and you want to renew your strength, you don't need the green radish. But the Chinese, you know, anything green. Uh, Ching Chun, you see, Ching Chun. The word Ching is also green and Ching Chun is youth, okay? So uh, for us is that we trust the Lord. We wait upon God to be young. So even at 67, going to 68 now, I am still feeling like 25. Why? Because I've been waiting upon the Lord. And it says, they shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And that is to tell us that even at an old age, you find that you'll be like Caleb of the Bible. He said that I was 40 when I follow you, Lord, and then now I'm 80, but my strength has not ebbed. My strength is still like that of a 40-year-old man. And I pray that every one of you, God will bless you with good strength. 
And those of you, if, if you have suffered to a, an illness, I pray that God will re-energize you and God will replenish you, all right, with good strength. That you, when you reach 80, when you reach 90, and when you reach 100 and 110 and 120, you will be as strong as you were in, in your age 40, yeah, or age 30, you see, because that kind of strength will be wonderful. And you live a long, vigorous life. White radish will be the next item. And you say, Feng Shen Shui Qi. Uh, Feng Shen Shui Qi means may your success roar like the winds and the wave. Wow, this is a lot. So I say to you, is how can you have your success roar like the wind and the wave? Yeah, uh, You go to the one who come the wave and stop the wind. Yeah, You go to the one who is able to stir up the wave also, but also be able to calm the way. You see, the one who is in control of your life. That's why I say, commit to the Lord, whatever you do, and he will establish your plan. Isn't that marvelous? And so in this Chinese New Year time, you know, you must look to the Lord. Even when you are visiting your relative, and if you have unsafe parents, this is the time to get safe, uh, to get them safe. And that's what I, I did, right? And that, you know, I did not did not avoid sharing Christ during the Chinese New Year. Every opportunity I, I, I have, I will share Christ. So commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plan, which means that may your success roar like the winds and the waves. All right, the pomelo, you can use pomelo or you can use lime, okay? The lime is that you can squeeze onto, uh, you know, the, the uh, raw fish, or you can add pamelo into the lo sang, yeah? So, da ji da li, da ji da li, dai gut dai li, yeah? You see the gut, uh, the gut, uh, you see the, the gum gut, <laughs> okay? So, wish you good luck and good profit. So, Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10 say, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vet will be bursting with wine. What is, what is this portion trying to say? Is that the more you bless the kingdom of God, the more you give to the kingdom of God, the more you are faithful in your tithing and giving. You know what? you really will have taikat taile. Okay? And it's not that good luck, huh? it's blessing, blessing. You will get blessing because you have the key to blessing. So obedience and having a very generous spirit is the key to blessing. So anyone want to be blessed, you learn how to open your hand and release first and God will open his hand and he will release to you. And that is the secret. I find that many people struggle to be rich. And there are many people far richer than Pastor Grace and I, far richer. But yet, they do not have enough. They do not have enough. They, they say that, Chen Pukoa, all right? And for us, we do not earn a lot, but we always have enough. You see, so it's not how much you earn, but whether you have enough. All right. And so for us is that we have uh, abundance. Yeah. All right. The next one is the pepper. So it's Zhao Chai Jin Bao. Zhao Chai Jin Bao. Attract wealth and receive treasures. And how do you do, do that? And that is quite simple. Uh, Matthew 6 33, our favorite verse. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. If you read the whole chapter of Matthew 6, it's talking about, you know, the pagan trying to seek for all the earthly things and the worldly things and the temporal things. And so they have been pursuing after those things. And then the Lord knows that you need those things, you know. You need clothes on your back. You need food on the table. You need roof above your head. You need a car to drive. All this God knows. Okay. And how do you get it? You get it by not seeking for it. it means that you are, 
you are running all over the place. You know, you don't want to go to church because I have to make money. You don't want to go to prayer meeting because I have to make money. You don't want to, to read Bible because I'm too busy. I'm, I'm going to make money. I'm going to make money. And then what happened here is that suddenly you realize that you are a bankrupt. <laughs> Why? Because you got the wrong key. The right key is to seek first the kingdom of God. You know why? Because you kick the one, you, 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 you seek the one who is blessing the whole world. Who created the whole world? Who created the universe? Who has all the wealth? God. So instead of you trying to use all your little effort, you know, your, your small energy to try to seek after wealth, you seek after God, and then he says, All these things shall be added unto you. Wow. I tell you, I make the right choice. I pray that you make the right choice to seek after God and forget about, you know, trying to seek wealth because you, the, the, the principle of the Bible is that when you open your hand and release, God will release wealth unto you. And the Lord say, the gates of he heaven and the windows of heaven shall be open and all the blessings shall come unto you. Okay? So Pepper say. <laughs> okay, how about the Chinese five spice powder that's been used? Yeah, Wu Fu Ling Men. Wu Fu Ling Men means the five types of blessing come to your door. Wow, oh, five types. What five types of blessing means longevity, long life. All right, many of us like to have long life and wealth. Okay, wealth. So it's Chang So, ah, Chang So, Fu Kui, ah, Kang Ling, ah. So, so well-being means health, health, wealth and health. Ah, uh, the the health is not just physical health, but the whole being. All right, mental health, emotional health, and then how how the so it's good morals, good morals. Ah, uh, you find that this will come to your house. Ah, uh, all the good things and moral things will come to your house, and then. When you want to de depart, uh, san chong, uh, means that peaceful departure or blessed departure or happy departure. Okay, so the Chinese cover everything, you know. And so this five, five spice powder tell you, Wu Fu Ling Men. All right, but for us Christians, we have all this already. We already have all this. Okay, why longevity? I got eternal life. What can be longer than eternal life? People live long, you know, 100 years old, 120 years old. And, but most people die around about 70, 80, right? But for, for us, is that when we die, and then we got eternal life. Well, Fu Kui, I have Fu Kui. Because my father is a father of Fu Kui. My father is a father of wealth. And the, anything that he has, he gives me. One day when I go to heaven, you know, the street will be made of gold. The gold that you treasure so much here, God said, I, I use it to pave the road. Lah. You see? So imagine you carry gold to heaven and God was wondering, why you carry gold to heaven? I use it to pave the road. All right? So it is like that you carry a whole bunch of tar, you know, the pebble, you know, from the road and you carry around and say, this is my treasure. God said, these are something I step upon. And of course, your well-being, your 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 uh your health huh? uh when we go to heaven we will have no sickness there'll be no death there'll be no more tears and of course how the good morals of course will be in heaven because that god has allowed his righteousness the righteousness of christ to come upon us so that we can become the righteousness of god and peaceful departure of course when we die, however we die, the, the result and the, the landing part, all right? You know, however the plane fly, huh? but when it land, it's always peaceful. Why? Because we are guaranteed to land in heaven. Now, if today you are not sure that if something were to happen to you, uh, you know, like let's say you, you say, if something were to happen to you last night and you may not sure this morning where you would be, now is a good time for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. All you need to do is say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me on the cross. I receive your salvation 
And I believe that on the third day you rose again and that you have given me eternal life. And now I receive all this. I'm sorry for my sin. Please wash me with your precious blood and cleanse me and make me a new person. All right. All you need to do is say a very simple like this. I accept you as my savior. And then you can be assured of. So it is not based on your feeling. It's not based on your emotion. It's based on the promise of God. Once you base upon God's promise, no matter what happened to you, you will be in heaven. For example, there were the two thieves, right? By the side uh, that when Jesus was on the cross, one of them was like rejecting him. You know, I, uh, you know, who are you? You also died on the cross, uh, right? But the other guy recognized that's the savior. Uh, he died on the cross for a purpose. And so he asked the Lord. He said, remember me when you go to paradise. And the Lord said, today you shall be with me. You see, just one word from the Lord. Today you shall be with me in paradise. That guy who jeered at the Lord, you know, that, that, that thief is still now in hell for the last 2,000 years. Okay? But the other guy who said, Lord, you know, receive me. I believe in you, yeah? He is 2,000 years in heaven. Which one do you want? You want 2,000 years in hell or you want 2,000 years in heaven? Some of you are still jeering, you know, and still like unbelieve and live your life like you are a devil like that. Uh, why are you doing that? You see? Uh, so if you want the blessing of, of the Lord, just give your life to Christ. Okay. So what is the verse that we are going to use? The verse that is the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. So, that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you, which means that his presence is always with you and be gracious to you. You know what is this? This is part of the Aaronic uh, uh, blessing or the priestly blessing. And then Moses told Aaron, you know, this is how you are going to bless the people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And you can always say this to your family members. Okay. And then even Chinese New Year, uh, you know, when you have visitors coming to your home, you can say this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. I love it. I'd like to repeat this again and again. Sesame seed. Uh, all right. Da xiao ping an. Uh, da xiao ping an, which means that the adult and the children, they are all uh, peaceful or, or at peace or safe. So peace and safety for all in your family. So Psalm 121 verse 8 says, The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. Okay? From this time forth and even forevermore. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. Isn't that great? So that all your family members, when you are under the covering of the blood of Jesus, when you have the protection of the Holy Spirit, and the holy angels in your home. Guess what? You go out and you come in, you are blessed. You're under the covering, you're under the protection. Therefore, peace and safety for all your family. So you see how wonderful. Share this sermon with some of your Chinese friends. Yeah, that da xiao ping an ah. And that is the sure way to have your whole family, you know, uh, being safe. Yeah. Then the ground peanuts, yeah, the, or the ground nuts, yeah. So, <laughs> may your home be filled with wealth and treasure. Now, <laughs> 1 Timothy 6 9 says, Those who want to be rich, however, fall into temptation and become ensnared by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. So, we have all those earlier on, all the blessings. Already good enough, good enough. Now this 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 Qingyi Mantang is good. You know why? Because it represents heaven. So it is not your home here, but your home in heaven. 
And therefore, you don't need to seek after riches. You seek after the God of heaven. Remember, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then there will be chingwi mantang, there will be treasure in your heavenly home. And that this world is not my home, and I'm just passing through. But heaven is my home. And then heaven, and God said that there will be mansions, and then you can send actually treasure ahead of your time. Uh, means that you can send ahead before you go to heaven, you can put treasure in heaven. So how do you put treasure in heaven? By walking according to the word of God, by being a blessing, by being God's hand extended to touch people for Christ. Yeah. All right, the fried creeps. Uh, this is also now thrown in. This definitely invented in Singapore. Yeah, and that's what was like added on. Yeah, and so is Wang Qing Man Di. <laughs> Just now that one is what Qing Yi Man Tang. This is Wang Qing Man Di. Means that gold is everywhere on the floor. May wealth and prosperity be everywhere. But like I say to you, Matthew six twenty. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy, where thief do not break in and steal. I know of a man who invested a lot in the painting, in a painting, and then he didn't realize that certain insect had been eating his painting. And then when he took out the frame, then you find that inside the frame, that part of the painting had been eaten away. You see, where moth and vermin are actually able to consume. Yeah. So what you must you do? You are going to have the street of gold. Wang Ching Man Ti in heaven. Wong Kam Wun Teya in heaven. All right. So so not to worry, that will come. But meanwhile, when you are doing your low hay, eat your eat your crips. Uh, uh, these are very very nice. <laughs> and these are mostly made of this wantan pay. The wantan pay, uh, they cut it and then they deep fry it. Yeah. All right, peanut oil, peanut oil. Jia fei wu nen. Jia fei wu nen. Means prosperity and harmony at home. All right. So in, in Chinese, actually, you say the, the, the family is very fat and the house is very tender. <laughs> Okay, now what's the verse that we, we will use for this? Now, Psalm 133, verse 1 and 2 say, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garment. So what happened here is that this one talk about that there will be harmony in the home. Isn't that great that if in the family you don't have quarrels? Yeah. Isn't that great? Isn't that great that nobody scold you and you scold nobody? And everybody is very loving and peaceful and everybody is appreciating each other. And there's no black sheep in the family and there's no rejects in the family. There's no second class in the family. That everybody is loved all the same. Isn't that true? And one time I asked my father, I said that, how can you love four of us? All right. I wanted my father to love me more. And I said, I'm the eldest son. Father, don't you love me more? And father said, I love you, but I also love your sisters and I also love your brother. But then I say, but father, how can you share your love? You know, you only got so much love. And then you love me, then you can't love the rest, right? And he said, no. He said, you don't understand. Uh, he said that love is not, you know, like you add on or you subtract. Love is multiplied. The more number you add to it, the more you multiply. And so later on, when I became a Christian, then I understood it. Yes, yes. That the more you love, all right, the more you have to love. This agape love is limitless. And that's how when in Cambodia, I was able to love all those kids. At first we started, we have only like 50 kids. And 
and I was able to hug every one of, of them. How, how could one person love 50 kids? But later on, when we have a thousand kids, it's very hard to hug all of them. And uh, we had five centers, you know, it's very hard to go to all the centers and hug all, all of them. But you can love. And God, of course, He can love. And, and so this peanut oil tells you that when brethren live together in harmony and in pleasantry, yeah, uh, in, in, in peace, what is going to happen? It's like oil that flows smooth, very smooth. Everything is happy. Sesame oil is Chai Yuan Guang Jing. Chai Yuan Guang Jing means uh, may wealth pour in from all direction. Okay? So, Proverbs 21 verse 20 says, Precious treasures and oil are in the dwelling of the wise. Now, how do you continue to have all the wealth coming in, all right, all the prosperity coming in? It's because you have wisdom. And how can you have wisdom is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Therefore, you see, for us, is, this is brilliant. If we want to have wisdom, we are not going like read a lot of books and all that, but we start off with the fear of the Lord. When we fear the Lord, and then when we begin to encounter those uh, wisdom saying and all that, we begin to understand and we uh, accumulate and assimilate all this wisdom that is, uh, that is in the Bible, the book of Proverbs, you know, all this wisdom start coming in. But if you are a foolish person, you know what happened here is that you cannot receive wisdom. And so all the precious treasures and oil, you know what, you consume them all. Instead of investing them, you consume them, and then you got nothing. So you are very concerned about today and not about the future. But God is saying that, but you can have wisdom. The very moment you have wisdom, then you know how to invest and you know how to replenish. You know how to increase. And then you have no lack. And that's how the sesame oil in the Chinese here gives you this idea. Okay, then we come to the final one. Uh, no, this is not the final one. Okay? This is the plum sauce, the plum sauce, yeah? Uh, uh, you need to put the plum sauce inside too. So the, the Chinese saying is Tian Tian Mimi. Tian Tian Mimi. That's a song by Tan Li Jun. Eh? Uh, a Teresa thing say Tian Mimi. <laughs> ni xiao de duo tian mi. Ah, now, may your life be sweet like honey. All right? So I found this verse, Psalm 65, verse 11. Oh, you crown the year with bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. Wow, I tell you, the life is sweet like honey. Definitely, definitely. Because your God, the God who loves you, all right? Because you honor him so much, you praise him so much, you love him so much. And you're not pretending, you're not pretending, you know. Let me tell you, people who praise God and they pretend that they don't get blessed. But when you praise God from the bottom of your, of your heart and touching Him, you know, and letting Him touch you, He will bless you. You'll crown your years with bountiful harvest. And harvest can mean a lot of things. Imagine that at night, all right, that you have this peace in your heart that you can rest. People struggle with insomnia and you are like sleeping like a baby, okay? And then your mind is at peace. You are not always struggling with all kinds of bitterness and anger and what this person say about you and what. You know what? Because you have a generous spirit and you forgive. When you forgive bountifully, the bountiful harvest will come upon you. And God said, I, uh, even the pathway, you know, the trodden pathway that's very hard, that even that one, uh, when no seed can, can penetrate through, even that the seed will penetrate through. See? When God says so, even the hard pathway that had no harvest 
will be overflowing with abundance. Wow, I tell you this Psalm 65, 11, if you, you know, you can write it out and put it on the wall because that is what happened. So your life is telling me, me, wow. I tell you, I'm so excited because we have a great God and I have a great God and this God is mine and I'm his. I don't know you can say that, but I can, all right? If you can say that, put your thumbs up, yeah? Say, yeah, okay, praise God. All right, then come to the tossing, the tossing, yeah? So uh, when you, uh, next few days, uh, all right, you're going to toss, okay? So this is what uh, we encourage you to do, is that if you are doing the Christian style, right, you can do this, you can toss the yisang towards the center seven times, and with a loud shout of lo hey, also can. And <laughs> last time we say hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, choose the right word that you want to use. Say hallelujah or lo hey, right? So the verse that I choose here is Proverbs 11, 25. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. What I'm saying here is that when you are tossing up high, right, tossing up high here, it's not so much that you are prospering, but that you share your prosperity, that you are tossing your prosperity and sharing with others so that they can be blessed and that you are refreshing others, refreshing others. And that then, you know what? Once again, you know, when you open your hand to bless others and refresh others, Guess what? God is not going to out let you outdo him. He is going to refresh you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He'll refresh you, right? Amen. Praise be to God. And so, my sermon concludes. I say, we wish you a very blessed and happy Lunar New Year. Amen. I trust that you enjoy this sermon. <laughs> Praise God.